Hey, hey everybody, welcome to the studio. I thought it would be awesome to do a studio tour now that most of the construction is done. It's not 100% yet, but I thought we'd talk about it a little bit. Now, we'll, we'll show the outside quickly because that does come into some of the stuff that's happening on the inside. This is a two-story building. It does have this shed run out here, which will eventually be closed in. So let's go on inside. Come on in, I'll show you the inside of the studio. So there's the inside of the building. And this frame was constructed last spring. It was done in April. And then we started doing the insulating and the wall boards. Many of you saw that happen. So let's just look outside quickly. You can see my view. It's a little bright. Sun's definitely shining right now. And uh, that's my house right there. So there's my commute. I have to walk all the way from there to here. It's tough, but I manage it. <laughs> All right, so here's my studio space. And as I mentioned, it's not quite finished yet. We're still working on it. We have more things that are gonna be complete this spring. As you will notice, there's wall boards on the wall, which, you know, that's where you put your wall boards. But if you look up here, they're not, there's none <laughs> yet. So I have to finish painting the boards because I've painted every single board in here by hand. I have to finish painting them and then we have a crew coming out because it's so high up there that we're not climbing that. We're gonna have a crew do that. So that's gonna happen. So that's what's left to be done with the studio construction is getting the ceiling and the loft area complete and a little bit of work on the second floor. I'm not gonna show the second floor today. We will do a full tour once the building is complete. Complete, complete, but um, right now I'm just gonna show you the pottery studio. So. There's my filming area. So we'll just start over here. Most of you uh, will recognize it. This is all of our gear. You don't usually see all of this, but there is a lot of cameras. There's a lot of lights happening. Um, you usually just see, oh, that, isn't that nice? That's what you all see. And I'll take you around to show you what I see because it's totally different um, from my side. So this is the filming wall, we call it, and this is the filming area. And here's what the magic is back here. I've got some things. I don't keep a lot of things back here because I store them where they belong and when I need them, I pull them up. But I got a few things. And uh, there's, this is what I see when I look at you. Hi everybody, this is what I'm seeing. I'm seeing all of your smiling faces. I'm imagining them all out there. So this is what I see. Um, right now we don't have all the cameras on, but you can see the monitor right there. I can see you now. It's actually set up for sitting down. I have to adjust the cameras um, for standing. So anyhow, I've got some things arrived in the mail. I got some goodies from Diamond Core Tools. I'll have to open those up. But I have my rolling pins, some of them, on the wall here. Not all of them. Uh, I've got a few more stored down there and I've got a few more around the studio. But these, this uh, cabinetry system I got from Ikea, I did a lot of storage solutions from Ikea because they're so easy to configure for whatever you need for your space. And they look great. I mean, this, this looks fabulous on camera and it looks great as a gallery, which I have basically the twin to this setup over there. And we'll, we'll get there in a minute. My lovely clay share sign and then the sun shining through. It's all of 16 degrees outside today, so it's, it's a little chilly. So let's just go over to the gallery since we're over here. You know, and I wanna mention, when I built this building, normally people will have the second floor go the entire length. And I decided to do a loft because I wanted more light. I wanted this to be a very bright, airy space. I spend most of my life in this building uh, and I want it to be a place that's welcoming and open. You'll notice it's very open in here. I didn't go all the way to the ceiling when, with anything as far as the storage racks and everything is pretty much, if it can be, it's mobile. All right, so this is the other, see how they're twins, the filming side versus the gallery. So this is where pots for sale live and if you come to the studio for Open Studio Weekend, you will see there'll be pots here um, that people could purchase if they would like to. And I have my plants that were given to me by one of our lovely members. I've got some of them still alive. Uh, yeah, I kill plants, those poor things. But some of them are hanging on. 
and then uh, let's just take a look around. So right here to the right, I have my glazing area. So I've got this table here where I've got some of my dip and pour glazes. I've got this really great stainless steel uh, workspace here. I've got my glaze book. I've got technology is my life, right? So I've got stuff charging, um, little sketches. This is what I'm doing for the clay share con demo. Some great bamboo ladles for glaze dipping and pouring. Test tiles, more test tiles. I have bins of test tiles. Those are just some I'm working with right now. And then over here, I have some rolling racks. I love these because I can move them. Same with that table, by the way. I didn't mention it's on casters. So I can move it if I don't want it here. So say Open Studio Weekend comes and I need to change things around, I can move this table out of the way. All right, so these rolling racks, which hold bisqueware or drying pots, depends what's happening in the studio, they can be rolled anywhere I want to go. And that's important for me because that shed run out I was talking about, that shed part on the outside, you can kind of see it outside the, the windows here, that's eventually gonna get closed in and become the glaze room. And my gas kiln, you cannot, we'll see it out the other window, is way down at the end. So eventually this, in the summertime, I do open it up and leave it open, but this roll up door will just lead to the glaze room. So that'll be a whole another section of the studio once it gets complete. So these mean I can unload my bisqueware from the kilns. I can load them up on the racks and take them right out to the glazing area. And eventually that's where all the glazes will live. And so here are my three electric LNLs that I have currently in the studio. I'll do another video talking about my LNL kilns. And I do have another LNL that's 50 years old that I use as a Raku kiln. Um, it's not hooked up yet, so that's that will happen in the spring. Uh, it's at the other studio, our old studio, which we still have. Uh, another great work table. I usually glaze on this one as well. And again, I mentioned everything is on wheels, so it can roll around. And I can take this table and I can roll it up to the front, put it right as an L up against the other table, and I can have a great big work surface for glazing on. So it's really fabulous for that. This is another nice storage and glaze storage, and it's on wheels, cart. This was a gift from Jeff from GR Pottery Forms. He sent me this as a studio warming present. Currently it has bisqueware on it and my Artista wheel. The Artista wheel is actually gonna move. Uh, we're building a table for it. It's gonna go next to the filming area. So that's gonna move. Now I do have in this box the cover for this rack, it actually has a plastic cover that tents the whole thing. And I just haven't set it up yet, but I'll get there, I promise. I'll get it done eventually. All right, we're kind of at the back, so we'll keep going. This is uh, the kiln wall, so that's what we call this. Some storage for my kiln posts. Still working on what I'm gonna do with my kiln shelves. Haven't got there yet, but we will get there. This is how we go to the second floor. We're not gonna go up there today. When it's finished, I'll share it. Back here I have some glaze storage. These are also from Ikea. They're called their Ivar line. They're a really great modular system. I have the 12 inch deep. I think it's actually 11 and three quarters inches deep, but they're great because I can access them from the side, from the front, and actually I've set it up so I can go upstairs and I can get my glaze from up here too. So. No space goes unused here in the studio. All right, we'll come back down. Uh, the studio is heated by a pellet stove. I use about one bag of pellets a day in the winter, which is phenomenal for a space this big. It's very well insulated and it really is a dream to work in. Over here I have my Dust Cobra. This is an industrial grade vacuum that is specifically made for vacuuming silica. It's the only vacuum that is. Don't use your household vacuums to vacuum in your studio. They're not safe. This one is, and uh, it's great. It's fabulous. All right, I've got more storage ideas for you. These are 50 pound dog food storage containers right here. Let me drag one out. But they'll hold a 50 pound bag of dry materials. And for me, I make a lot of my own glazes. This is a great way for me to store it. So that's the Minspar 200. I wrote it on the outside as well. And I can take that outside to mix glazes. I don't mix glazes up in the studio. I don't wanna have this dry material up in the air. 
So I have some dry material storage in here. The rest is outside. And here's some more dry materials, things that are smaller, that don't fit in bins, that fit in bags are in here. My iron oxide, I have a couple different types of iron oxide and uh, some other materials and stuff. Glazes that didn't fit on the shelf. I'm still working this corner out. My aprons, which I do need to find a better hanging solution, but right now that's working. Another rack full of glazes. Did I say that this rack will hold 240 bottles of Amico glaze? Right? So you can, when you buy these, buy extra shelves. They come with five shelves, I believe, and I put three extra for a total of eight. And then over there, I think I did 10. I can make them shorter. So it's entirely up to you what you need to do as far as making it uh, modular and everything. It's, it's fabulous. And then some more materials back here. I have some of my mason stains for coloring glazes and such. China paints, pyrometric cones, glazes that didn't fit on the shelf again. That seems to be a common thing. There's always more glazes. Storage for stroking coats in the big bottles and some under glazes. More test tiles. So these racks here in the middle are really where I keep my molds, my GR pottery forms, some rim templates, molds I've made, molds I've purchased, plaster molds, bisque molds, Michael Harbridge's Learn Fired Arts molds, the Forma leaves, I got a whole bunch of those, I love those, GR pottery forms. I like to store my GR pottery forms flat. Some folks stand them on the end, but I, I think they just last longer this way, it's better for the form rim templates over on this side. And you know, as I go on, if I need more storage, I've got space, I can add more racks. So I just haven't got there yet. This really great little chest of drawers that's full of goodies, you know, some sprig molds and that I made from things and got stamps on top and all kinds of stuff. So these drawers I use for cookie cutters. These are my De La Design cutters are all in this one. These are just commercial cookie cutters that I picked up wherever, all over, are <laughs> in these two. But again, they're, they're on wheels, so I can take them places. So if I'm working, and I didn't talk about my work table, but we'll get there, but if I'm working at my work table or filming, I can just roll my cookie cutters up there and have everything right at my fingertips. So it just makes my life so easy. Uh, always need more storage. These big bins I picked up, and they're fabulous for storing the big cutters. I have things like my immersion blender and my Iwatani, which is my blowtorch nozzle, which is in there, and some, some other goodies. My Bailey slab roller. And what I love about this is that the way the table is, I can store so much under it. So there's some lace some templates from craft foam. This is, so this is full of templates, this is full of lace. And then around the other side, I've got, what do I have over here? I just got a new bin, so this one's, it's brand new, so there's nothing in there. But this one has got a few things. So try to be organized, that's the big key, right? Why is there a level? Just because it's magnetic, it'll stick, and I know where it is. It's for no reason other than I know it's always there. So if I need the level for something else, I can just grab it. I keep a little wire cutter here. Same thing with the paint key. The paint key is only because I know it's there. That's it, that's all. There's no other reason. Just, I would lose this, but if I keep it hanging here, anytime I need to open something, I have that. Uh, also with these bins, I didn't mention, uh, the height is such that I can put my canvas under it to store. So this is my canvas for porcelain clay. This is my dark clay canvas um, and stonework. So it works out great so I can keep that right there. And then my work table, we built this out of a piece of four by eight plywood. I think we used the three quarter inch plywood. It is reinforced so you can look up underneath. You wanna see under there for support, so it's got three crossbars in the middle and then the ends and the sides. It's not on casters, it doesn't roll around, it stays put, it's one of the few things that don't move in the studio, but not only is it a great big work surface that I can just spread out on and really make a mess, I did clean it up for you though, um, 
I can store my glazes under it. And if anybody comes to the studio and is working on something, there's plenty of room you can put. Oh, I think we could definitely fit six people around this. And there's enough space in the studio to bring in other tables to work. So that's the other great thing about a modular studio storage system is I can bring in more tables. All right, what else can we talk about? Ooh, this, I've had this for years and I love it. It's on wheels. I take it when I, every time I film, when you see me for a live, it's usually parked up here, Ooh, right there. It lives there. When I'm going to be hand building, I usually sit. This is my favorite spot right here in this seat. This is my seat. I usually have it right here. Here, come sit with me. Let's have a seat. So I'll sit here. There's my tools, my view. If uh, I've rolled out clay, my slab roller, I can just take my slab and grab it and bring it over here and work right here. So this is brilliant for me. It just works so great. Let's talk about with well, a throwing area. So here's where I do my wheel throwing. And these are again are the Ivar storage system from Ikea. And I keep repeating it because you guys keep asking me about it and I want to share it with you. So here's some bisqueware, store that. I've got some finished pieces stuff in process, all kinds of stuff going on here. This is just the inexpensive little rack that I picked up on Amazon. It's my bat storage solution. These are plate holders I also got from Ikea, but when I wash my bats, and, and they're not soaking wet, but when they're just damp, I can sit them in here and they dry and then I put them down below. And I know I gotta wash, I gotta do a better job washing. I know it. Now, here's my two pottery wheels that I have from Bailey. This is my Pro XL. I've had this one for 17 years. Fabulous wheel, no problems. I've had to do a little routine maintenance, but nothing more than that. So this is the one that I throw my porcelain on. And I know I have two wheels, but I used to teach private classes and having two wheels made life great for that. So I could have a student on one wheel and I would be on the other and I could demonstrate and then they could work and we could work together. It was just really a great way. But after I stopped doing that, I had two wheels. So this became my wheel for throwing with porcelain. And then this is my stoneware. So now I don't have to clean this wheel if I want to use porcelain. I can just, I can just work, which is great. And you can see I don't clean. I don't have to because I'm the only one in here. So I just leave it and it's fine. Um, Bailey wheels, I love this enclosed splash pan. I, I just love it. And then everything drains down. You can see there's a bucket, drains into the bucket, and then you can reclaim that. And then on my stoneware wheel, I have my strong arm, which they're gonna be joining us for Clay Share Con, and they have joined us in the past, so you can go get a little preview and check out what they do. But that's here. I also have my boss base from Speedball and just some other tools and things hanging out. My air cleaning system. This is an Enviro Cleanse air cleaner. And I usually unplug it and move it around the studio depending on what I'm doing. Just because if I'm working on a bunch of wheel throwing things, I don't want this this close to the wheel. I could get clay on it, so I move it. Or if I'm doing some extruding, so here's my extruding area, I'll move the air cleaner to the front. I'll just plug it in and put it up front. So here I have two extruders. I know I have a lot of Bailey and the reason is Bailey's close to me. Uh, so shipping isn't as much as it might be to someplace else. And they make really great products. They just have good things. So I buy a lot of Bailey. This is a five inch pneumatic extruder, which means it's driven by a air compressor, which is stored right down there. It's all hooked up. It's how foot pedal operates it. And then that pneumatic drive comes down. This lifts up and swings out of the way so you can put your clay in. And then this is my four inch, which is a manual extruder. And then on here is a table or wall mount, small extruder. Now here's what I was talking about all along mobile, right? So this right here, this little trolley, it rolls out. So when I'm working, I can do an extrusion that starts here and goes all the way to the floor because none of this is here. But when I'm not working on extruding things, it's just a great place to store my hand extruders and my dies and some other things. So it just 
is really handy in the studio and it just rolls out and usually I put it right where this air cleaner is and that way I have a work table that I can work with and space to do my extrusions. All right, so here's my wedging table. I plaster bat that I poured into my old wedging table, but that table died. Like I just used it till it broke and we built a new table. I took the plaster out of it and I've been using the same chunk of plaster for about 15 years. Can you believe it? And it's still going, but it's a new table. We just built it with a flat top, really well reinforced down here. And it, it's been working great for us. So from there we come to clay. Now my clay storage is really interesting because you'll notice that it's all on these dollies. And that is so I can move it one, to make room in the studio, but in the summertime, I don't keep my clay here. In the summertime, the clay stores by the pellet stove, but in the winter, I don't want it near the heat. So in the winter, I just roll it over here, but it's not in the way, it's on dollies. These dollies will hold a thousand pounds, each one of them. So I just roll it out of the way if I need to get, if I need to reach something, I mean, I can get down there, but I can move it. Sometimes I move it over toward the slab roller, you know, it just depends. So my studio does not have running water or sewer. So that is why I have a sink. I do bring buckets out to the studio and use that for many things. But sometimes you just need to be able to clean your supplies, your glazing, and you want to clean up your stuff. And so I have a sink. Diamond Core Tool makes this. It's fabulous. I also have a couple different mops. I have my spin mop for big mopping. And then this little one from O Cedar, you just fill it yourself with water and it's great for cleaning up small messes so you can take care of everything pretty quickly. All right, we'll go in here. So as I mentioned, the studio does not have sewer or water, but I do have a bathroom because I have an incinerating toilet. So this is my incinolet. It burns everything up and the ash that it makes is completely safe to even go on your garden. So it's brilliant. It's a, it's a really great solution. And then, you know, just normal bathroom bathroom stuff. So yes, there's a bathroom in my studio, which is very nice. And then I think the only thing I haven't talked about yet is the production booth. Now Kevin's not here, so we're going to go in. And like I mentioned, we are still working on the space. It's still not done. We've got a little bit to do. As you can see, he's got the wear, the wall boards up, some of it, but the rest needs to be finished, but we'll get there. We'll get it done. So this is Kevin's production booth, and this is where all the production happens for Clay Share. I'm going to zoom back a bit. Look at all that. There's a lot happening, and he doesn't even have all the monitors on, but all the different cameras, when we bring people in on Zoom, we have all these computers, so we can have multiple people in when we do um, guests and all of that. This is a switcher board and all of his keys and, and stuff that I have no idea what it does because I don't have to know. And he can look out and see this window opens. It's open right now so we can talk to each other. Or he can shut it if he's having a meeting with somebody or talking to someone or just wants some privacy. You know, he can shut himself in here. So this is the production booth. So this is like, this is where the Wizard of Oz is, right? Back here. This is... <laughs> I think that's everything. Did I talk about the whole space? Um, oh, I didn't show, I don't know if I can show you the gas kiln from inside. We'll talk about that more as we get closer to spring. I'll do um, more on the gas kiln, but oh, you can kind of see it. That big metal thing out the window to the left. Yeah, that's the gas kiln. But there it is, there's my studio and uh, a lot of light a lot of open space it's very airy it's very welcoming we've had many many people in here already for open studio events and such and it doesn't feel like you're crowded so it's it's just been a dream come true to have the space and to be able to share it with you all so i want to thank you all for being here um and joining me for clay share con i was thrilled to be able to do this video to premiere it during clay share con I've been meaning to do a studio tour for ages and it just, I need a little push to do so, but here you have it. Uh, if you have any questions about anything I talked about here, please reach out and uh, I will be happy to, to 